Hi everybody. <clears throat> I've been asked by a few people if I would talk about time. And so that's what this video is about. But I will <laughs> warn you all, including me, that this is probably the most difficult subject to explain that I've ever tried to explain. And I'll do my best to, to make it simple so that we can all understand, but it's a very, very complicated subject. So it may be a bit long and it may be a bit complex, so you'll have to bear with me. And as always, I've got some notes. Now, time. We really need to talk about space-time because time and space are sort of linked together. They, they always go together. You can't have one without the other. Now, everything is made of vibration. I am, I appear solid, but I'm actually just vibration. You are vibration. Uh, the chair I'm sitting in is just a mass of vibration. All the trees and grass and stuff outside, is, everything is just vibration. It appears solid, but that's part of this grand illusion. Everything is just atoms vibrating. Now, the, the thing is, what makes them separate, what makes me separate from you, is that we all, everything, has a unique frequency. I have a certain frequency. You have a different certain frequency. This chair has its own frequency. And that's what makes things appear different, is this difference in frequency. Okay, everything's, everything's vibrating, but slightly differently. Now, I did explain all this to a certain extent in a video I made called How Some Aliens Travel. And I'll have to go back over it a little bit in order to get to the time thing. Now, you'll have to bear with me because it's, it's so complicated that I've got to keep looking at at the notes because I, I, I barely understand it myself. Now, for me to exist, I'm going to talk about me, but the same would apply to you, obviously. For me to exist, I have to have my personal frequency, okay, which we call A. We do a little bit of algebra, we call it A. And the spot that I'm at here also if every spot in the galaxy has a unique frequency also so the spot where I am at this moment we'll call B my body frequency is A and the frequency of the spot where I am is B if I move to a, an inch to my left or an inch to my right the frequency will alter the B frequency will alter but at the moment, I'm sat here, and my body is A, This the spot where I'm at is B, and for me to exist, I have to be somewhere. So, my body frequency and my the spot frequency where I am add up and give us C. We've got an A, a B, and we add them together, and we call that C. Now, that C frequency is what you're looking at. Me sat talking to you at a certain spot. It's important to try and understand that, that my body is A, the spot where I am is B, and together they make me looking at you. Okay? The same would apply to you. You're sat somewhere watching me talking to you. So you've got your A plus the spot where you are which is your B, and together they make a C, which is you sat watching me. Okay, now, now we've got time, because it's a certain time of the day here while I'm talking to you. When you're going to be watching this, it will be a different time of the day. Now, time is also a frequency. Every microsecond of time is a particular frequency separate from every other microsecond of time. 
okay you've got a certain frequency then a microsecond later you've got another certain frequency and then another certain frequency and another certain frequency and it goes on like that so at the very moment when i'm talking to you i i know i'm stretched out through time but forget that imagine that i was just doing one clack of uh, of time i would have my f frequency the frequency of the spot where i am and the frequency of that microsecond of time when I'm talking to you. And so we would have A plus B that we mentioned before, but then time we will now call C. And all of that adds up together and gives us a D. Because I, in order for me to talk to you, I have to exist. I have to be somewhere, and I have to be uh, in a certain spot of time, okay? So we've got this frequency plus frequency plus frequency, and the whole thick lot together form um, what we call, a, what I was calling a D frequency, which is me talking to you at this particular moment. Now, already that's very difficult to understand, and I hope you can understand it. I've sort of laboured the point a bit to try and help you understand it, but it is, if it's new to you, it's very, very complicated that you've got all these different frequencies going on, and you can't exist, and a blade of grass can't exist, and the chair that I'm sat in can't exist, and this book can't exist without having all those frequencies. Now... Bashar, you may have heard of a, an alien gentleman called Bashar, and he's a very, very intelligent person, and he, he knows most things, <laughs> he's an amazing person, and he describes time as a series of frames, like on a, a film, okay? Now, the galaxy... This is another one that's going to be difficult to understand. The galaxy is being formed and a microsecond later it's destroyed. Then it's reformed and a microsecond later it's destroyed. Then it's reformed and so on. You've got this series of like still frames of time and the whole galaxy is destroyed in between any two frames. Now the reason why that happens is in itself a very interesting subject and I understand a bit more about that and I'll explain that in another video another day but except if you will is you've got these series of still frames and in between you've got a blank just a very tiny blank for a micro 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 second picture nothing picture nothing picture nothing picture nothing now Bashar explains it very well, but he describes it as if it's a long strip of frame, a long strip of film, so, sorry. And it's not actually quite like that, because time doesn't actually exist. There is only the now moment. So these different frames are not, they are one after the other, but they're not in a, a vertical sort of sense. They're in a linear sense, because there's only the now moment, You've got this now moment here for a microsecond, and then behind that was a microsecond in the past, and behind that a microsecond in the past, and on and on and on and on. Now, each one of those little, we call them pictures, but they're, they're just little frames of reality, each one of those has got a unique frequency also. They're little tiny cutouts of time of, of of reality that are linked to time and each one of those is encoded with a particular frequency to keep them separate one from the other each frame has a different frequency to it now if i want to travel back through time imagine that i wanted to go back and watch hannibal crossing the Alps with, <coughs> excuse me, with his elephants. 
What I would need is first of all my quiescent frequency, the frequency of the spot where I am, the frequency of the time where I am now, and add those three up and it would give me an A plus a B plus a C. It would give me, oh, sorry, hit the microphone. It would give me a D frequency. And if I wanted to go back and watch Hannibal doing his thing, I would, if I wanted to physically travel there, I would keep my quiescent frequency. That wouldn't alter. But the spot on the planet where Hannibal would be, I'd need to know. I need to know the frequency of that spot where Hannibal is with his elephants crossing the Alps, which would be the B. My body would still be the A. The spot where Hannibal is, we would call a B. And the time when Hannibal was doing that, the, if we would need more or less the exact moment in time when he was doing his thing. I know it was spread out over time, but we would need a certain point of time in order to be there. Now, once again, we would need to add my particular frequency to the fre <coughs> excuse me, to the frequency of where Hannibal is, his spot in space, and the frequency of the time that he's doing his thing so he had an A plus a B plus a C which would give us a D and that D would correspond to this point in time and space where Hannibal is crossing the Alps sometime in the past and <coughs> do pardon me now um, so if for me to travel to that spot and watch Hannibal doing his thing I would need to bombard my body with that particular frequency of me plus Hannibal where he is on, in the Alps somewhere plus the time when he was doing his thing and add all, add all that up which would give me this D frequency and I would need to bombard myself with that frequency and if I was successful I'd shoot off and find myself watching Hannibal crossing the Alps with his elephants. Okay, now that's all very well, but supposing I spent an hour watching Hannibal doing his thing, and then I wanted to return home. An hour will have passed, so as there are billions of little tiny frames every second, there would be count, and each one has its own particular vibration. There would be countless little moments in, in, in time that would have passed in the hour that I was gone. Now, how would I know which point, or how to, which one of those to select, select that would correspond exactly to the hour that I was gone in order to link up with my time again, my, my now time? Now... You could say, "Oh, don't worry about that. You knew that you knew that the frequency of the time when you left an hour previously. So go back to that. But how would that work? Would my family still sort of be here? Would I still be in the same reality? And I'm not sure that if I went away and came back an hour later than my family and all the rest of the world." I'm not sure what, what that would give. I don't know if anybody knows the answer to that, but I'm, a, I'm not sure that that, that that would work to be an hour behind everybody else. Maybe. Wouldn't notice anything. I, I don't know. But one thing is certain. It would be very, very difficult for me to know how to calculate how, how many different frequencies have gone in the hour that I spent with Hannibal to come back to link up exactly with my family and all the rest of the world in the time of that hour in the future, if you can understand what I mean. So, I'm not quite sure how getting back works. I can see how to get somewhere, but I'm not sure how to get back. 
and I'm going to stop there because <laughs> that's all I can really tell you about time. It's a very, very complicated subject and it's linked with space because we have this space-time and the whole thing is a bit of a nightmare really to explain. It's a very fascinating subject and I've, I've done my best to explain it in simple terms. I don't know if you can understand it, but I've done my best. Now, one last thing before I go. People go off to the Akashic Records. Now, what they, what they do is they go off with their mind and enter the Akashic Record, where all these same events that we can actually physically visit, if we know all these vibrations, you can actually link with the same vibrations with your mind. But now, you can get back from that quite easily because your body's not gone anywhere. And once you finish watching Hannibal doing his thing or whatever it might be that you want to watch, you just return with your mind and you're back in real time. There's nothing, nothing untowards happen. But to physically go somewhere, mustn't split my infinitives, to go physically to go somewhere <laughs> um, is all very well, but it's the getting back bit that I find a bit hard to understand. OK, I'll stop here. Thank you very much for listening to me, and I'll speak to you again, maybe about this little gap in the, in the time when all, all the universe is destroyed every microsecond. I'll talk to you about that, maybe. If, OK, if, if anybody's interested to know. Thank you for listening to me, and bye.